Yo, what's up? Here I am playing against my good buddy Leon28. He's not really my good buddy. Don't even know who he is. Uh, I'm gonna just play this Benoni type thing because I think A3 is not useful in the Benoni. So I'm just gonna do this. Um, maybe A3 is useful in this position. Whatever. Mm, all right, I'm just gonna go D5, man. Screw it. I don't think he's going to take my knight, but I'm pre-moving just in case. I'm assuming this is okay. I'm just going to castle. Uh, take his knight and then, um... I'm just going to do this. He can take on c6, which is mildly annoying. Oh, he didn't. This seems okay for me. I'll just go b6 next move. He has an isolated pawn. Uh, Alright, end games with isolated pawn are even better. Uh, maybe he has... I don't know what he has. If d5, knight takes d5. Oh, then bishop takes. And then pawn takes. And then bishop b e7, rook e8, knight d5. Oh, that's an ugly move. I'm going to put both my rooks in the middle, and I'm just somewhat better here. Hmm... Uh, I'll start with this move. Honestly, I could just go g5 next move. I'll just go here, though. I just want to trade everything, because in, in these end games, um... Can I screw up a little bit? Let's see, knight d5. Probably it's okay. I'm just going to do this. Too lazy to calculate. I mean, it's definitely okay. I just, I feel like I, I, I want to just maintain the, the D pawn on D4. I want to make sure that weakness stays on the board. And as long as it does, I just have some kind of small advantage. So if he goes bishop takes E7, I'm probably going to take with a knight. Because so if king takes, knight takes D7, bishop takes D, I'm sorry. Bishop E7, king E7, knight D5, bishop D5, rook C8. Rook C8, bishop takes D5, pawn takes D5. It's basically, you know, it's approximately equal. So I'm going to pre-move this bad boy. <laughs> there we go. And now I still have, okay. Is that a good move or a crappy one? I think I should just go a6. Hope it's okay. If rook c8, um, I can't take with the rook because then he gets knight b6. But I'll take with something else, uh, either the knight or the bishop. Probably the, probably the bishop. Um, yeah, I'll pre-move it even. He's spending lots of time now, too, which is going to be absolutely fatal. Because even if I don't just beat him on the board, he's just going to lose the time scramble. However, I believe I am slightly better still. I, I don't know what he's thinking about. He has 40 seconds left for the whole game of chess. This is not not a good strategy in three minutes to think in a position like this. It's basically suicide. Am I, am I lagging? It's almost unbelievable. Oh, he just resigns. I I don't know, man. I mean, resigning is a bit extreme. I guess he just looked over his clock. He was like, oh, I'm going to lose. But that's really, really weird. I mean, he goes here slightly worse. It's, you know, I, mean, I was going to win for sure. But, I mean, resigning is a very strange thing to do. But whatever, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, he did, he, he did weird things like letting... If you get this isolated pawn type position, usually you don't want to trade pieces. And he took with the queen. He just kind of let me get my dream position here. Uh, you know, one of his chances, he had a chance to try with this move, to try to get rid of the pawn. I don't know. It probably doesn't work. I mean, somehow, like, this is annoying, though, attacking my rook. And if knight takes, I thought bishop takes. You know, so I, I don't know, maybe d5, like, at least can try. Oh, it says I'm doing well still. Wait, so why can't he take? Knight takes, bishop takes. Rook e8. Oh, is king stranded? If king f1, bishop a6, and if king here. 
Well, I didn't see this. The idea is if the bishop moves, this is checkmate. So, like, that's cool. All right. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye-bye.